Dear guests, colleagues, students. We need science as a basis of technology and to guide our decisions in the real world. So science is useful. But science is so much more than useful. Science is not just the study of reality. Science is the poetry of reality. Or so it should be if we communicate it right. And the activities and the special information <clears throat> that we have is something we should share with the public and use to raise the public debate whenever possible. And I think the problem is that we don't take the time to think about what we are saying. We just want to overwhelm with the diagrams and the charts and all that stuff that will make our audience, whoever it is, unaccountably tired and sick. How can we change the world? I'd want to pick up on one of the points that have also reached the Norwegian debate about the significance of academic boycotts. I think it's a fundamental problem that there are so few realists. And what we try is to come in the head of this woman who is going to choose a degree. I feel like it's more legitimate for women to talk about angels than to solve integrals. The thing that is the most puzzling and exciting to me about synthetic biology, the thing that is the most puzzling and exciting to me about synthetic biology, and then also a sense of how immature this whole area is. If we discover this new symmetry of nature called supersymmetry, it won't tell us that string theory is correct. But it tells us that this one fundamental mathematical idea at the heart of string theory at least is related to the real world. There is the infant looking away at the fight. Mother grabs the infant, grabs a flower, distracts the infant. Now the monkeys in the background are running away. And look at that face-to-face -face interaction. The reason we looked at it is because it's not supposed to happen. So what I hope to do today is to give you a sense of the theoretical framework and, uh, and then hopefully stimulate those of you who are interested in the topic of human mating, which as far as I know is just about everybody, uh, to, uh, to pursue this further. You are, in short, at the end of a very long line of successful pairings going all the way back to the days when you were a unicellular microscopic blob. The way I, I prefer to think of it as a cognitive psychologist is that one of the things that biology gave us is a uh, reasoning engine. I Klima for Forskning så sier regjeringen at alle vitenskapelige artikler som er resultat av offentlig finansiert forskning prinsipielt skal være åpent tilgjengelig. But I hope I have left you with the image that this planet, this wonderful planet that we have, is largely driven by microbial activity. I'll just tell you. There is no better library in this world, I would say. <laughs>